Okay, so I like to call this one the highlighter journal doodle. Very creative, I know. I'm, I'm not the best with names, by the way. <laughs> okay, so this one I actually originally created in a, a little journal notebook. Um, pocket size, um, I can carry it in my purse because it's not very bulky at all, it's pretty thin. Um, and I, I think I remember doing this, creating this in my old studio. So I wanted to share it with you. It's, it's a lot of fun to make, especially if, if you're using highlighters. Um, highlighters are very, very easy to layer on top of each other, um, no matter what colors you have. Now, I of course have a lot of colors here. So don't feel like you have to have these exact colors because you definitely don't. Um, you can always make the best with whatever you have. So that being said, I'm going to remove a few colors and let's make it a little difficult for me. Um, I don't know, like I'll keep the green. How about that? I really love blue and I really want to show you guys how to make that purple. So I am going to keep those two colors, but let's just keep it simple, you know? There you go, limited palette, but of course, with you guys, use as many as you want or as many as you have. Um, so let me leave those right there. And I was originally going to create this on top of my uh, my sketchbook, but it is a journal doodle. So I actually have some lined paper right here. Ta -da. Okay, so you guys should, actually, I think I need to, I think I need to share both screens. Is that right, Casey? In order to, because I'd like to. Yep. Hold on, I'll spotlight both for you. Perfect, thank you. And I want you guys to see both of them. You can hear my dog in the background. He's protecting us. Okay, do you have us both spotlighted? Yes. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. Um, the pencil right here, um, you are more than welcome to use the pencil to sketch it all out first. Um, I generally like to encourage everyone to dive straight into the project and just use purple, or not purple, uh, use your pen. Um, I feel like it, uh, it's really, I don't know, it's, it's so empowering to be able to create something straight from pen. Um, however, you do have that pencil as a safety net, especially whenever we do those blue flowers that you see right there. Um, those flowers, I would say, are probably the only tricky thing to create. So um, you can certainly use your pencil right there as well. So I just admitted one more person. Um, okay, so I am first gonna start off with my pot right here, my little terracotta pot. And for me, I'm just gonna dive right into it. So at least with a notebook, you have the lines to guide you to. So wide brim. I say you have the lines to guide you and then <laughs> end up going a little bit off kilter, but that's okay. It's exactly what happens. So I have the two edges, which are a little bit bowed. I mean, they don't have to be then complete that section. And then this bottom section is gonna be much longer. I always encourage you guys um, to use your fingers. Yes. I don't know if it's just my screen, but I'm just seeing mm -hmm. the big flower pot. I can't see your where you're drawing. Oh, okay. And I don't know um, if that's just my screen. I don't know, because I, I just see the big picture of the flower pot. <laughs> uh, I think okay. it's your sharing. Let me try this, hold on. Okay. That's better. That's it's split screen. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's better. Thank you. Okay, good. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. So um, let me go ahead and start all over. At least if you're using the lines, you have these as a guide. Um, so what I did was I made my first line, um, which is going to be the top of that pot. And then I made two side sections, side lines here. Then I completed it. That's going to be the rim of the, the pot. And I always like to use my fingers whenever I'm trying to determine how long to make a certain line. Start about here. 
stretch it on down, go to the other side and see if you can make this line the same length. And again, you have your fingers to sort of approximate where you should end. There you go. And complete the line. Now it's not a hundred percent flower pot shaped, but that is okay. At least we have a little baseline here. So, so that, I mean, our, our flowers are gonna be floating just a little bit, but at least we can kind of tell how long the stems need to be. So I give you guys another few seconds for that. Let's see if you guys can see this picture a little bit closer. There we go. Okay. I actually created this project when I was kind of on like a highlighter kick. Um, there's so many projects that I wanted to make with highlighter because I think they're just so versatile. Okay. So now we begin the fun part. Um, and we're gonna start with the easiest of the flowers. The easiest of course is going to be um, the pink one up here. So that one is ridiculously easy to, to do, but maybe you have a different opinion. So pick a spot somewhere up here. Um, I don't know, let's, let's do one over here. Um, I'm gonna start by making a point. So um, this particular pink flower, we are gonna start by making a little dot. Um, and this dot is going to be the bottom of our petals. So let's, let's look at our petals. Our petals have three different lumps in them. One, two, three. And I'd say there's four or five petals there. So we're gonna strive for five, but if we don't see five, then that's okay. Um, each petal overlaps the other one next to it. See that? And by overlapping, we create these little, little loopies in here. Now I'm gonna stop whenever I get to my, my most sideways, my most horizontal petal. And I'm gonna jump around to the other side, make my other one, three little lumpies, until, oh, see, I accidentally made two little lumps and that's okay. One, two, three. At some point, it should be relatively flat or relatively horizontal this way. And as an option, um, I don't know if you guys can see, but there's a little tiny petal that's sticking down. You definitely don't have to make that little petal anywhere, but you can. It makes it a little bit more realistic, but again, you don't have to. And then there are some tiny little petals on the bottom. There are names for, for each portion of the flower and I don't remember exactly what they are um, and that's okay. So, what I am gonna do is I will go through each and every one of these flowers and I'll show you once how to create them. Um, but in between, you can put as many of these flowers as you want. So just sort of pick your favorites and put them where you want, however many you want. Now, the next one is gonna be the yellow one. So that one, I had some inspiration for that one and I don't remember what it is. Um, Perhaps a, a, is it a dandelion, I think. So um, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it has a little triangle, a little green triangle underneath it. And we're gonna start right there. That little green triangle, it's really small. So that little green triangle. And then it has a whole bunch of scallop shapes coming up um, from, from that portion. So I'm going to make a whole bunch of those. They can be a little bit more elongated or they can be a little shorter. Completely up to you. At some point, we're going to have to stack them and layer them. So what we're going to be doing is going up 
connecting another scallop line or another arch from one to the next. Keep on going up. Now they don't always have to reach the middle of the petal. If it happens that way, then that's great. But I just tend to lose track a little bit. And I also don't want each of my petals to, to, to keep getting larger and larger as I go up. Um, I want them to kind of be, be the same size. So they are just kind of like as overall as a flower, um, you're gonna have less and less petals stacking on top of each other. So you'll see what I mean, kind of like that. So I'm just kind of kind of gonna end it right there. Go back up around. Accidentally made one petal pretty big, pretty massive petal, but it's okay. Just gonna keep on going. And again, less and less petals as we go up. It's starting to look a little bit like a clover actually. It can be whatever you want it to be. So we're gonna have a bunch of floating flower heads around here. We'll get to the stems after we have all of those put in there. So far, is there anything you guys want me to repeat? Pink flower or yellow flower. Very cool. All right. Now this next one, I'm gonna get a pencil for that one. Only because it's a little bit bowl shaped at the top there. And it'd be nice to have the capability of erasing just a little bit. So hopefully you guys will be able to see my pencil marks. Um, I'm personally going to be pressing down hard with my pencil because I would like to, you to see. Um, however, for you guys, you don't have to press down as hard because I want you guys to be able to erase it afterward. So we'll start with the middle of that flower, that yellow section. So I'm just gonna draw a line, even though it's, it's pretty lumpy in there. For now, let's just draw a line. I'm sorry, an, an arch. We're gonna draw an arch. And then these petals right here, they're a little bit wavy, but they sort of they sort of move around that middle section right there. So I'm gonna start with the easiest petal to take to look at. And it's going to be that that middle one right there. So it's gonna go up. Gonna have a little lump right there in the middle, and it's gonna go down. Same thing with the next one. Up, have a little lump, and it's gonna come right back down. They actually kind of look like teeth, like very abstract looking teeth, but they're not teeth. Promise, not teeth. And then these other petals are kind of gonna wrap around like that. This one kind of hides in the back. And then I want to go and put another petal next to it. Kind of like that. And then I have a little bit of room for a petal. I can squeeze it in here. Yours may look different, but because of perspective, the lump that's in the back is going to be a little bit smaller the other one, not so small, like that. Now, in order to make things a little even, I have a little wiggle room to add another petal over here. This one is gonna be very thin petal, right there. So I could just sort of add that off to the side. Everyone's little flower is going to be a little bit different. And I will repeat these flowers. Like, if you want to watch me do these flowers again, 
that's okay. I'll do them again. Um, and we do want to go back and um, in the middle, turn these, turn this middle section, uh, make it very lumpy. So I erased it a little bit and I can go in there and lumpify it. Add some more little scallops in there. Now, because that one was a little difficult, I'm gonna go ahead and do that again. Let's see, I can make another one down here, perhaps. Started with the middle, start with that arch. And then we're gonna make the petal. The front ones, at least for me, are the easiest ones. So they're gonna come up here, around there. Gonna do the one next to it. Because of perspective, I had this one stretch up a little bit that way. I had it stretch that way. Now I'm gonna jump to this side. Make another one peeking out through there. And again, peeking out through there. And I have room for a little one over here. But because of perspective, I want to make the back petal a little bit thinner, like that. And once again, I have a little bit of space to add another one right there. I could erase it, or I'm sorry, erase that, that back line there just to make some more room. That would make sense and then lumpify the middle there. Make it lumpy, there we go. If, any know, if anyone knows any flower terminology, you are more than welcome to educate me. <laughs> I feel like I've learned it maybe once before, just in one ear or the other, but Keep telling me and I'll get it eventually. Now, I will go ahead and go over that last flower one more time, just in case you needed it. So, in the middle, make that arch. Now, just in the meantime, any one of you guys can go ahead and create these other flowers as many times as you want. Um, so I guess before I do that blue flower again, um, do you guys want me to repeat any of the other ones? Okay. All right. So that middle one here, oh, I'm sorry, that blue one there, I've created the middle. And let's go ahead and I'll just start on this side. I'll start on this petal just because I can. So there's that one. I've made one on the opposite end. I can also, I think I want to erase this one because thinking about perspective again, that back lump needs to be a little bit thinner. There you go. And then jump to that back pedal. And again, got another one. And I still have room to add some onto the sides here. There we go. I made a tiny little lump right there. And it looks like this side, at least for mine, it needs to be a little more even. So I'm gonna add another, I'm gonna squeeze another one in there. Right there. I'm gonna erase that line. Now remember, these are very abstract flowers and they look so charming and beautiful as abstract flowers. So it looks like on the bottom of 
these blue flowers um, are a bunch of um, leaves that are kind of curled downward. Now for that part, I'm actually going to make this a little bit, I'll lower this down a little bit. If there's anyone here who has a, I don't know, I guess like a significant little gap in between the two petals, you're more than welcome to modify it somehow. Maybe like make your petals a little bit bigger. There we go. I just kind of fix them. And then I would just create little triangles for the bottom. They look like triangles or banners on the bottom right there. I'm just gonna try and get rid of this gap as well. As much as I could at least. And then again, make little triangles. You can make four of them if you can squeeze them in there. And once, if you happen, if you happen to be using a um, a pencil, then once you're happy with your creation, you can go over it with pen. So that is exactly what I'm going to do right now. And after that, I'll just, I'll, one more time, I'll go over how to do those other flowers. And then we can start making the stems. Let's see, I feel like I have to erase some of my pencil lines because my pen isn't really wanting to go over them so much. Maybe I just need to make them a little bit lighter. Like the pen isn't ad adhering to the paper. It's probably because I'm pressing down so so hard. There we go. Oh yeah, much better. I erase it just enough so that I can still. So we'll see what I drew. Now I'll let you guys in on a little secret of mine. Um, I typically will draw like the same five flowers or same types of elements within those flowers, like those lumpies that you see in the yellow one or those kinds of leaves that you see in the pink one. Um, Cause I don't feel like I need to reinvent the wheel and it just looks nicer if you can arrange them in different ways and be creative with it. Be creative with the same few elements again and again. So I just thought I would throw that out there. Um, and in fact, I use Pinterest all the time for my inspiration. Um, sometimes, well, a lot of times actually, um, Pinterest and the different artists on there have great ways of breaking down different wildflowers into um, uh, very man manageable parts. So it's just a lot of fun to see what Pinterest has to offer and, and how you can simplify certain flowers. Does anyone else get on Pinterest here a lot? Am I the only one? I could spend a long time on that site. It's such a great source of inspiration. So many different artists on there. Okay, so I'm gonna see if I can just erase these lines.
All right. Um, I will just go over maybe this one, the yellow one. The one with all the lumpies, I'll do that one again. So the yellow one that you see in the picture, um, the one on the left side, um, that one actually does not have the triangle underneath it. So if you wanted to, you could actually just start without it. In fact, I think I started on that second tier. I'll show you in a second, but I'm pretty sure I started on that second tier of petals like that. And another little trick is that if you go faster with your mark making, they tend to, to, to look a lot more whimsical that way. There you go, see, very quickly. Um, now that's the second tier. My first tier consists of petals that kind of go downwards a little bit. I'm just gonna complete that. There you go. That way I don't really need that triangle right there. It just gives a sense of having a different perspective. So with the triangle versus without the triangle. Not a necessary thing to include, but it's nice to know. Let's see, I will do... Perhaps I can show you how to overlap a flower or two. So this fan flower, I can see right here that there's not too much space to create a, a whole one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to squeeze it in here. I'm going to make another fan flower, the pink one. So I'll make a dot right there. I think there's plenty of space to move upward, at least for now. And gonna stretch upwards and anytime there's something else in front of whatever I'm drawing, I'm still gonna make the motions of drawing it, but I'm not actually gonna put the pen down. So I made the motion of it having three little lumps at the top, but you know, the flower was in the way. So I just kind of continued it afterwards. Make the motion. There we go, and now I can continue like normal. And since this one looks mostly flat, I can jump to the opposite side. Didn't need to jump over anything that time. There's nothing in the way. I think I have enough space to put one more little petal. It's not completely flat, but I like it that way. So with this idea in mind, I'm going to squeeze another one in, maybe over here. And say maybe I want this flower to be, um, to move off to the side. Maybe it's not standing up straight. Maybe it's just kind of tilted. So I can always tilt my paper. Again, make a little dot. And because I'm tilting my paper, um, I'll have just another little perspective. There we go. Start like normal, end like normal. I think I even have a little room for one more tiny petal. Now we have a perfectly tilted little flower, all because I tilted my paper. Okay, so let's get to making some stems and maybe even an extra few little leaves coming off to the side. So the stems, in my opinion, are gonna be the more important ones because they all need stems. So you can take your pencil or your pen. It's completely up to you. Um, start with the easiest ones, the, the flowers that don't really have anything in their way or maybe they don't have much in their way. So for me, that would be these small ones down here. Stretch them down. Two sides for each stem. Now the stem, 
I recommend, I know it's a little difficult, but I do recommend going more quickly, striking them down quickly with your hand. And I say that because it makes it, um, it's just a completely different look compared to going a little slower. So my next easiest ones, probably gonna be that one, probably gonna be this, maybe this one. So this one I can aim, because I have a flower in the way, um, you can always use your finger to sort of guide you, guide where, where you need to land. Now I had a flower in the way, so I did have to jump, jump over it. My next easiest, probably, probably this one actually. This one, the first one that I did. That's because I had this wide space in between the flower and the pot. With this one, I have another flower to jump over. But again, I'm just kind of eyeballing where it should go. And this one droops down to right over here. Take your time with it, you guys. Jump down there, jump down there. There we go, got some stems. Now, some of our flowers, uh, well, some of our stems are probably gonna need some leaves. Now I see some, some pretty, pretty big full leaves on some of these flowers. Um, I chose to do full leaves, uh, at least in this picture, um, on the yellow flowers because they had the most space around them. So you can choose to do it that way. It doesn't really matter. Um, there's a lot of space right over here. So I can do a big full leaf there. Um, I'm going to pick a spot somewhere on the leaf and kind of, even though I have lines here, that's okay. It's okay that your line is showing through because it's supposed to look very sketchy. It's supposed to look like, like you made it on a whip. And again, I have a good amount of space right here, so I can do that. Optional, if you want to put a line in the middle. If you wanted to create a different type of leaf, um, I could suggest doing a longer leaf like that, where it starts out a little bit thicker, but definitely stretches up and becomes much more thin at the top there. Got some space right there for one. But before I go any further, I just wanna show you how to make um, that much more viney um, plant. There's one that's sticking up um, and it, it's actually the tallest thing there. And there's also another one off to the side, to the right side. So it's completely up to you and where your, I guess the, the arrangement of your flowers. But I could opt to have one of those guys maybe, maybe sticking up over here. So I have a lot of things in the way, right? And I don't think I have time to mess with like trying to give it two, um, two lines for a stem. What I did was I have it, I had it come off to the side, jump over the dandelion there and reach out to the top. So that's gonna be the stem for that one flower. Then I can start to make my leaves coming off of that. I guess those leaves that you see right there are a bit more elongated and I also have a flower in the way too, so I don't really need to worry about doing it, doing too much. My leaves get a little bit smaller at the top there. Again, it's supposed to be very sketchy. And just to show you another one, I'm gonna have one come up from here 
and sort of curve its way up like that. So I did have that flower to jump over. And I have a lot of lines to overlap. See right down here, and that's okay. My leaves are going to be, well, I'm trying to make them a lot bigger on the bottom there. Trying to. And I want them to be a little bit smaller as I go up the vine. Like that. And you also see a bunch of petals, just random floating petals. I don't know if you guys noticed that before. Those floating petals are all optional. So I usually will put those little petals around here just to signify movement. And it's, it's also just a really great um, filler, like a space filler if you need one. I think we're really doing pretty good. We get to use our highlighters next. Yay. There we go. I'm going to move that upwards so you guys can see it. So I know that earlier I, I had taken away some of my colors just to, to limit myself. However, I do want to show you, if you happen to have orange, I want to show you how to make that effect with the, the pot, um, color in the pot, pretty much. Um, so I am going to use orange, but you are more than welcome to leave to color in a different color or perhaps leave it blank and maybe just highlight the flowers. That would look really nice, too. Um, or maybe even skip all that, don't color this in orange, and just stick to coloring the sides with your other colors, whatever colors you have. That might be an idea too. So I just want to show you how to do that part. I might actually, I might actually show you how to do the flowers first now that I think about it, just in case you don't have orange and can't do that part. So let's color in the flowers first. Now you don't have to keep the same colors that I'm doing, but I would like to show you a little bit about how to layer in your colors. Each flower is first gonna have a base color. So what you can do is fill in every single petal first. Start with one color at a time. You can use the, the thicker end of your brush if you want to, or the thinner end. It's really up to you, whatever you're comfortable with. I feel like we've created our very own coloring book this way. Put in all the hard work of making all the petals and all the flowers. Now we just get to color it. So I got some blue there. And since I limited myself, um, I don't have yellow. But if there's anybody who would like for me to fill it in with yellow, then please tell me and I can always add it in. It's not a problem. Cool. Yeah, I am always open to any suggestions you guys have. So since I'm not using yellow, let's just kind of fill it in with pink. Now, some of your pens may smear just a little bit, but I find that if you, um, if you don't linger within a petal for too long and just kind of go quickly, sometimes that helps. Sometimes if you start in the middle and then work your way out, that minimizes the, uh, the spread of the ink. It's also a really nice touch. Um, I just feel like it's a lot more, more artsy if you don't actually 
fill in completely every single petal. See that? It just looks a lot more sketchy that way. There we go. Again, one color at a time. And then the layering happens afterwards. Some of my ink is running, so I'm starting in the middle. Now, just because I'm really excited to show you this part, um, I'm, I'm actually going to jump into coloring uh, my, my blue flowers here. Um, you can see here that that looks very purple in the original picture. However, I know that blue and pink do create purple. So on the bottom here, I can go in and make little little swipes and it starts to look like purple. I'm not coloring in the entire thing, um, this, this new color, although I can if I want to. Perhaps if you, if you would rather it be completely purple, you can certainly color in the whole thing. All I'm doing is taking the thin edge of my marker and making these quick little lines gives it a completely different look and feel. There we go. Now, if I had yellow at my disposal, I could definitely color this in yellow, but I'm limiting myself, so I'm gonna keep it blank. If y'all have another color or if you have yellow, then you certainly can fill it in. Now, those fan flowers, those are going to be um, uh, pink. I mean, at least originally they were pink. So let's see what we can do. I could make them pink. I'm just kind of show you. I guess for the sake of showing you guys um, more layering techniques, I could I could go ahead and put in some orange, or I could just put in some green, and make some some brownish effects. On the color wheel, you'll see that green and red actually red is part of the or pink is part of the red family. Um, those are both um, opposites on the color wheel. So if you were to mix them together with paint, they create brown. So I'm curious to see what it looks like with highlighter. Now you already know what happens when you add um, blue together with the pink. Of course you get the purple, but... That's an interesting color. I kind of like it, green and pink. It's definitely a brown color, but looks really nice. Here's one that has purple in it. Just wanted to complete it. Not too bad. Maybe for the, the last one, I'll show you what orange looks on top or looks like on top.
There we go. Got some orange in there. Not too bad. So we have a lot of greenery to fill in. So once again, just kind of fill in all the petals. It'll also help you to, I guess, sort of pick them apart from the crowd, so to speak. Same thing with those bottom portions of the flowers. I think what I did on the original picture is I took some orange and put that orange into some of the, um, the leaves. And it made a uh, nice layering effect that made it look um, a little bit more realistic. Just a little bit. I think that was a leaf. Hope that that was a leaf. You can certainly, if you want to, go over some of your lines with your green. You can certainly leave them blank if you want to. Here's what that green looks like with a little bit of orange in there. Just kind of swipe some of that orange just to give the illusion of uh, variations of color. I'm just using the, the really thin portion of the brush. I said brush again, thin portion of the highlighter. There. Is everyone doing okay? I know we went kind of fast there. All right, and just in case you happen to have orange at your disposal, um, I'm gonna jump down into the terracotta pot. And I can just kind of color it in. I'm going lengthwise because, well, just because it just feels right. Like that, just going in lengthwise. And then on the bottom portion, I did kind of like a quick crosshatch. Because again, going quickly gives it more of that sketchy feel, abstract sketchy feel. So what I did right here is I just, it was bothering me that some of my lines were going too far out of the page. So I just sort of made a little barrier right there. So I'm just going up and down. And then again, I can go horizontally. You'll get the hang of it the more of these little um, cross hatching marks you make. I do encourage you to try going quickly with those, um, those cross hatching marks. It's, it's very empowering to do so. Now, in order to give it a little bit of um, depth, so to speak, I think I think I had purple at my disposal when I used this one. Um, however, I did have a lot of blue in there as well. So I can start off with the blue. Um, I believe blue and orange are opposites on the color wheel. So um, they're gonna be really nice to, to use um, in, with getting our shadows. Um, what I did first was I started underneath the pot, swipe it a little bit, give it a little shadow there. So I'm sort of pretending that my light source is kind of over here on this right side. If all my light is up here, then all my shadows will be down here. Lights up here, shadows on the opposite side. So therefore, I'm gonna go on the opposite side, down here. Swipe that down just a little bit.
Now, I don't know how realistic it is to have so much shadow down here on this bottom portion, but we're gonna go with it anyway. And then up here, if I'm pretending my light source is up here, then I'm going to make this area pretty dark too. I mean, I made this area dark, but this kind of deserves to be a little dark too. So it kind of gradually dissipates on this side, gets a little thinner on that side. Now this top section is looking a little lonely. So we'll just give it a little bit of shadow on the side there. I'm using the thin part of my brush there. A little bit of shadow there just to make that even. And then perhaps I'll bring this upwards. Put a little shadow on the bottom portion. Again, I don't know how accurate that is, but we're just gonna go with it. And then in order to really give it a little bit more depth, we can choose another color to add in there. Something a little more crazy. Um, I'll just do green. I don't know how much it's gonna show. That's no, not too bad. All I'm doing is very lightly going over some portions, the darkest portions, I should say just scribbling away. Although this right side is looking a little lonely, so I'm gonna put a little bit. That was me, I kind of forgot to pay attention to that side. So I'm gonna swipe just a little bit. There, not too bad. I don't think I need to put any other colors on that opposite side. Now, in the original picture, um, I also went in and I made a few little scribbles. Now, this is this completely optional, like that. I think I was just feeling a little extra, you know. So I just thought I would throw that in there. Again, totally optional. And I also had a little bit of a horizon line on the bottom here. So that line that goes down this way, I highly recommend you scribble it really quickly, a thin line. So start on one end, scribble, scribble, scribble down. Perhaps add another color if you're feeling the need. So very quickly, because again, it's much more rewarding when you can get that. So even though I didn't have as many colors as I did the first time around, I'm pretty happy with it personally. How are you guys feeling? Oh, Casey, beautiful. I'm gonna see if I can pin you. Lovely, I love it. I didn't have any green highlighters, but I'm working it out. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay um did you have blue I can't really tell because I can't make my screen that big I had a couple of green markers so I was able to do a little bit of something with that but I'm still working yeah. on things to do with my leaves without any green or blue yeah it looks it looks so good though with that shading thanks for sharing Casey lovely Anyone else like to share? Still working, still working, that's okay.
Hey, Susan. Hi. I had, I did mine in color pencil. So that's all I had. You know. Lovely. So, yeah. You're, yeah, you're still able to, um, to really get that layering effect. Yeah. So That's lovely. Uh, thank you. Yay. And I love the color of your pot too. Oh yeah. It's like red and purple. <laughs> like I layered like the lavender over red. So, yeah. yeah. That's lovely. Thank you. Lavender and red. It's pretty. Yeah, go ahead and stop like this. Oh, Judy. Awesome. Use your pastels and highlighters to get. Oh, interesting. Use pastel and bright highlighters together. Oh. Thank you for joining us, Judy. I don't know if you're if you're speaking or not, but I can't hear you, but that's okay. Um, thanks for joining though. I hope you guys learned a little something today. Like I said, I usually just recycle the same types of flowers or the same um, elements within the flowers that I'm that I'm creating. Marianne, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. It was lovely to, yeah, lovely to have you. Thank you. Hooray. Astrid, I see your hand is raised. Would you like to, to, to show us? You don't have to if you don't want to. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, now I can hear yeah, you. Yeah, I'm on my phone, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to show. Do I do oh, start gotcha. video? I'm not too sure. Gotcha. Um, if you're on your phone, you might be able to flip the camera um, uh, to the other camera on the other side, and then show um, show your workspace wherever your your piece is. Yeah, and yeah, you just hit that start video button, and it should work. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I wasn't too sure if that is the one I want. Start video. That would be the first thing to do. Oh, there we okay. go. And then flip it. Sorry. Yes. I'm new to all this. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Uh, give me Take, one your time. Second. Take your I'm time. I'm here for tech support. Any questions, <laughs> y'all just ask. Mm -hmm. Okay, since that's not working, because I, I don't know how to figure that out. So I'll just okay. I'll just bring it over here to show. Yeah, yeah, that works. There it is. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's lovely. Yeah. It's so bright. I'm gonna pin you real quick. There you are. Lovely, thank you. Okay. I no really problem. love, I really love your blue flowers. Yeah, I tried to do it like you did it, but it didn't work yeah. out that great, but I tried. <laughs> <laughs> no, it turned out really good though. Um, yeah, it had more you... space. So I just put the green <laughs> flower in the middle there because it has the most space. So I was like, okay, mm -hmm. let me just add the flowers or the leaves there. Yep, yep. But, yeah. You did the leaves really well though. Like it looks like they're actually moving in space, like like the way they should. Mm -hmm. I try to do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. It looks Thank good. You. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Yay. That makes me happy. Very cool, guys. I think I'm gonna still be poking at this for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can definitely keep on working on it. Like, honestly, even if you wanted to just keep on adding flowers and perhaps use it later as your own little coloring book, you can certainly do that too. My browser is preventing access to the microphone. Oh no. Casey, do you have anything, any, any tips for that? Um, that's a tricky one, but usually there's a, um, next to the microphone button, there's a little arrow pointing upward. 
And if you change it, um, when you click that, it'll say select microphone. If you change it to same as system, sometimes that will make a difference. Yeah, I, I feel like I've had that problem before and it, it helped. Anyone else like to share while Judy's getting that sorted out? I'll show you mine. Yeah. There we go. Oh, is that a different blue? Oh, I love that. You made your, your fan flowers, turn them blue. Very cool. They're so pretty. It was fun. I love, I love your little... Um, little piece of green or your, your your stem with all the leaves sticking out on the side i love that guy <laughs> <Little whimsical. laughs> yeah it really is thank you for sharing thanks for doing this you're welcome of course very cool yeah i i love flowers i dry them i, I try to draw them and paint them anytime i can I feel like I actually know how to draw a flower now. Yeah, yeah, they're they're a lot easier than you would think, you know, if you can simplify them a little bit. <laughs> now I'll have to come up with another um, another flower project, like a simple flower project for maybe for next month or something. Maybe we can do something a little different. Speaking of next month, I'm gonna see if I can pull up next month's pic or next week's picture. I have to first pull up my little paper that lists all of all of the projects, and I don't know where it is. That's okay. Next week is one line butterflies, right? Yes. Okay. You're correct. I remember I had that in mind for Valentine's Day. Because even if you don't have anybody on Valentine's Day, it's still fun to draw butterflies. So here is an example for next week. One line butterflies. So crayons and paper is all you need for this project. So I'll teach you um, how to create a butterfly um, using one line. So you don't pick up your, your hand or your crayon. Um, however, if you wanna make it into a two line, because if you wanna, if you wanna jump over into the other, um, the other wing, you certainly can. So that will be next week. It can be two line butterflies, but it's okay. <laughs> Yay! It's one of my favorite projects right now. Very cool. Would anyone else like to share? Does anyone have any questions for me? Any closing thoughts? I look forward to next week. Yay, me too. <laughs> Wonderful. Let's see. Well, it is 8.16, so maybe time to hop off, but I thank you all for joining us today. Um, it's always such a pleasure to see you guys, and I'm glad that we have a good steady class going now makes me happy. So enjoy the rest of y'all's evening.